Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Kai and today I have for you another exciting haul. So all of these items here are from Sweetie Nail Supply. I did my monthly um, Sweetie Nail Supply purchase and picked up quite a few new fun things to try. There's also some PR in here, including this stunning collection here that I will be showing off. It just didn't fit in the frame. But yeah, I have some chrome powders from their new brand, um, some nail care things, some brushes, and some various polishes or chromes. So I'm super excited to show it off. I really appreciate everybody who is here watching. If you would like to pick up any of this, it will be linked down below. And if you should choose to, I do have a discount code with them. I am an affiliate. The code is get pressed. It will save you 10% and is an awesome way to help support me as well. So yeah, thank you again for being here and let's get into it. So I'm currently filming this about an hour before I'm supposed to go out to dinner. So I am going to try to be less long-winded with this one, but still very thorough in the review. But let's start with the nail care items. So I did pick up two things for cuticle care because my cuticles lately have been feeling a little bit dry with all of the attention that they're getting with me putting on press-ons, removing them, whatnot. So I picked up two items here. This is the peach cuticle oil from Jello Jello. It's just a, a simple cuticle oil pen. They're not very expensive either. I mean, I know that the Korean products are more expensive and part of it honestly has to do with like importing fees. Basically, when you buy an import, it's always going to be at a markup because the company has to obviously source it from the original country and then pay fees and whatnot to bring it here. So in order to make a profit, they have to do a bit of a markup. But I was surprised. I think this was like $5 before discount. It might have even been four. I don't know. I'll have to double check. I'll put the prices of everything in the corner there so that you know and everything will obviously be linked below but for like a little cuticle oil pen one made in korea wasn't very expensive at all um let's smell it though because that's the real test right i got peach peach is one of my favorite scents of all time i like peach cherry blossom and i think gardenia the white flower those are probably three of my favorite scents let me get it out here. I don't want to push too much out though. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, that might have been too much. Ooh, okay, so that's a really nice peach scent. Sometimes I feel like with peach scents, they can be a little bit um, like too sugary sweet, if that makes sense. This one is nice and light. Like it smells like peaches, but it also has a bit of that and I mean this in a good way, that like lotion-y smell, if that makes sense, I don't know. Like your standard lotion smell. So it's not like super over the top, peachy, um, like sickeningly sweet. It's just a very nice light scent. So I'm excited about that. I will definitely be using this. And this is just uh, one of those simple ones that you paint on along your cuticle after you're done with a set, after you're done with removal or something. And yeah, just nice and handy. For other cuticle care, I did go ahead and pick up the D-Gel Potion. They have, I think, a couple different types. This was meant to be the one that helps with like um, dry damaged nails, that kind of thing. So I'll be honest, half the reason I got this is because they sold me with the packaging. Just wait until you see this. Look at that bottle. Oh my gosh, I can't. The Korean Japanese brands, they just, they really know how to package a product. What can I say? So this is again, the D-Gel healing potion. You get 12 milliliters or 0.4 fluid ounces. I believe if I were to open this, it has the ingredients perhaps. Yeah, I'm assuming that's ingredients. You can try to translate it if you would like which I appreciate, I appreciate that they put it on the actual bottle. But look, it's so pretty. It's this really nice frosted glass. Um, 
pretty sure it's glass. Like it feels heavy like glass. I don't think this is plastic because for one, if it was plastic, it would be a lot lighter. For two, it just um, has that feel. And it's that nice frosted look. The potion label is a metallic label painted on. And then you just have this really shiny handle with this decorative top here. I just, I saw this and I'll admit, again, they got me with the packaging, I will say. But this is something that you would actually paint on the nail itself, if I am correct. Um, and it dries down and is just meant to absorb in and help add a protective layer. I do also think it um, doesn't fully absorb, but it sits on top like a bit of a shield for your nail. I will do a little bit more research and put like a little blurb up here. I'm just trying to get this uh, this video filmed fairly quickly so that I can go to dinner. But yeah, it's stunning. I love it. Um, super happy with this. It is on the more expensive side. I think it's like $19 or something. Um, but it's basically like a hardening serum, a protective layer to go over your nails, your natural nails, when you don't have any products on them. And if there's one thing I know, it's it's important to keep your natural nails nice and healthy so that we can continue to do nails for a long time. So I'm really trying to invest in some nice nail care products that I can use to make sure that I can continue doing my nails for a long time because I very much enjoy doing that. Okay, so those were the nail care products. Let's talk about um, some more tools. So I did go ahead and pick up some things from, um, I don't actually know how to say the brand. I, I've been reading it as Blanc Blanc, but I've been told that it's supposed to be like the French pronunciation, which I think means that the C is silent. So it might just be Blanc Blanc. I'm not sure. I, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm probably butchering it. Um, I've never been great at pronouncing French things. These are little tip stands. They're super cute. They're just little heart-shaped stands and they each have like a different shine on them. So I think this is the one, I believe, because it has like a purpley blue shift. And then this is the blue one. I don't know, there are two different options on the website. One is the pink one, one's the blue one. I'd assume this is pink because it has that like pink shift and that this one is the blue one. They're very adorable. And one of the really nice things about these, and I probably will use it later, is this stand here is built in, the little, the little plastic tip. And what that means is when you are using them for magnetic gels, this whole thing is plastic and there's no risk of any sort of metal in the stand or the magnet in the stand interfering with your magnetic gel. Um, when I first started using magnetic gels, I had a big problem with like the center not magnetizing correctly and I couldn't, I mean, I didn't really like think about the magnet in the stand or the metal messing with the gel, but then it finally clicked and I was like, oh wait, I'm using a stand that's made of fully of metal. So whenever I'm magnetizing it, it's interfering with the pattern. And ever since I've switched to these plastic stands or something like this that's fully plastic, I've never had a problem with getting the exact shape that I want out of a mag gel. So yeah, very happy to have these. They're also just really cute for like demos and stuff. I do wish maybe they would come out with one that's like clear with iridescent. I think that would be fun because not every color goes with blue. So we'll see. Um, but so far I am liking them. And they weren't, again, they're not that expensive. I think it was like $4 for each, but if you get a discount, right, that brings it down. And I've definitely paid as much on AliExpress for this kind of stand, so not too bad. Now with these stands, I also picked up another product that was released on the website at the same time, and that is this. I don't know how to pronounce this, maybe Albicolds, but it is a, caramel tip gel and what it is is it's this thick sticky gel that is meant to use with your tip stands so instead of using like double-sided tape you take this comes in a little squeezy tube and you squeeze a generous amount onto your tip stand you cure it and then wipe away 
the top layer with some isopropyl alcohol and that's supposed to activate the stickiness and then you can stick your nail tip on the stand and it's supposed to be really strong like strong enough where you can file on the nail where you can buff the surface and it won't budge so let's go ahead and give it a try okay so i'm going to put down a pretty generous layer over this It's thick enough to where it holds its shape pretty well, but it also is self-leveling. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this under the lamp. Now you do only get 10 grams with this. I don't think it was that expensive though. I think it was like $11. And if you really can reuse this over and over, I would say it's definitely worth it. So let me go ahead and try it out. All right, so the stand has been cured. I do see a bit of like an inhibition layer, I think, on top. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe that away just with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I always use 91% when I'm doing nails. See if I can put my tip on here now. Okay. Very interesting. So you can see when I pressed the tip on, now it's like very clear instead of being that like matte color. Hmm. It does feel pretty sturdy. I mean, like I'm holding it from the tip and she ain't going anywhere. I don't know if I would say you can file on it and maybe I am just doing this wrong. Um, like it's definitely sturdy. You probably could buff. I think for sure you could buff the surface here. Like I don't think she's going anywhere if you were to buff it. If you're filing the edge though, well, let me try it. I guess, why should I just not try it, right? All right, here we go. Gotta, well. Yeah. I guess you could. I don't know. I think it, maybe it depends on like how hard you're filing. Like, let me see if I go really rough. You know what? Actually, that stays pretty well. I'm I'm pretty impressed. Thought it might pop off. So it will pop off. So like, if you see here, I'm pushing pretty hard on this. And it kind of like moved the nail over. But I think if I just, if I just stick it back on, yeah, it readheres and it's fine. So yeah, I guess you can file the free edge with this. As long as you're not going super hard on it, um, seems fine. Can I surface? And I think buffing the surface is absolutely fine because when you're buffing the surface, you're pushing down anyway. And so you're like pushing it back into the um, adhesive rather than when you're filing, you might be twisting it and pulling it off. So, huh, that's pretty nifty. I guess the real test would be like how many times can you wipe it off and will it still stick? Let me wipe it off a couple times and see, will it still be sticky? Yeah, wiping it a second time still works yeah so it does seem like it's fairly reusable which i appreciate because i hate having to replace the little sticky dots every time i go to do a nail set on my stands so yeah i mean i'm interested to test it out more but it seems to be sticking pretty well and i know that this is Kind of like a new thing to the market and i think that there are other options available too i just haven't really seen a lot of them um this is kind of like my my first try of this kind of product so yeah i'm pleasantly surprised okay very cool so i did try the albacol gel the caramel tip gel on another type of stand if my camera would focus here hello 
and it's these types of stands here that I used to use for my magnetic gels. And this has a much skinnier stand right here. So I'd put on a much skinnier bit of the gel. You can see here that it's a, a much thinner line. And I will say it does not stick as well if you don't use enough in terms of the width. If you only use a really small amount like this, and it's too skinny for the uh, nail to really have a lot of surface area to stick to, it definitely will not be as strong. So just something to note, if you have the really like skinny stands, it might not stick as well. You probably want to be using it with a stand that has a bit of a wider base to it so that you can get a lot of the product on there and get a nice large surface area for your nail to stick to. All right, in other nail tools, I did pick up um, a few brushes. I went a little bit crazy, I will admit. Um, I'm actually missing one, let me find it. Ah, here it is. So I actually, um, <laughs> I got impatient, I used this one here, and then these three I haven't even opened up yet. So I had started buying some nicer nail brushes um, kind of like earlier this year. And one of the first ones I got was the Diami small liner brush, the short liner brush. It is definitely like the skinniest, tiniest tipped detailer brush that I own. And so I really like the leaf gel liner brush from Zillabu. That one, the long liner brush, is one of my go-tos, and so I wanted to try um, and see if Diami had an option for those of you who do like shopping from just one place and don't want to pay shipping for, you know, multiple companies. Um, so I thought I would try this out. Here's what it looks like. I love, 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 again, that it comes with its own cap, and it has a little protective thing. I keep these, I don't know. I just think um, they're nice to have so that your brush has um, a layer of protection over it so it doesn't accidentally like get stuck on the inside of the cap if you put clear gel in your brush to store it. So here's what this looks like. It's super skinny. It's got such a fine tip. I don't know if you can really see how small that is. Like here's my hand comparison. But yeah, this brush is super, super fine tipped. I really like it. I have used it, like I said, already because i was just anxious to try it out and i will say it performs wonderfully it's a super nice longer liner brush if that's something that you are interested in so i would highly recommend checking this out if you're looking for a long detail brush in other brush news i also really have been wanting the leaf and petal brushes from diami i love painting like hand painted flowers and there's just a specific shape of brush that you need to get like really nice petal shapes in one stroke. And it's this pointed shape here. Let me see if I can get it open. I appreciate that these brushes do come in like an extra protective layer just in case something does happen during shipping. Um, it's got another dirty layer to go around it. They are expensive. So I would hope that they're shipped nicely and that they are high quality because I think each brush is like $22, $23, so they're not cheap, definitely not. But for me personally, now that I am further along in my nail journey, I definitely started with cheaper ones from Timu and Amazon and AliExpress and things like that, and they've served me well for sure. But I just find when you have the right tools to use that are high quality, it makes things easier. So I am willing to invest in um, some higher quality brushes to work with so that I can just more easily get the look going for. I understand not everybody has the money to, so definitely for sure use what you can, use what you're able to afford. Um, but if you are able to save, I would say things like high quality brushes when it comes to nail art, definitely worth it for me and my experience. So again, this one comes with its own cap. It has a little plastic protective layer over the top that I will save. And here's the tip of this one. It's just a really nice pointed brush that again, you can just flawlessly get those like pointed petal shapes out of. Let me see, I will actually go ahead and let me pull out a painting gel and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I will test this in a moment on an actual nail, but let me show you the other brushes first because then I can show you actually how all of them perform. So I also got the long leaf brush 
This is number 13. And just like the last one, it is a rounded pointed end art brush. Not a flat one, but a rounded one. Except for this one has a bit of a bigger tipped to it. So like here's the leaf cute brush versus the leaf long brush. Pretty drastically different tip sizes. So this is going to be for really small petals, for really small leaves, whereas this is going to be for like longer leaves, longer petals. Same sort of tip to it though. It's just a pointed round brush. And this is good for filling in areas as well. But again, it's really going to be perfect for getting those petal looks. And then I also got the check brush. So this is the long straight. It's meant for doing like those checkered patterns. And I figured that with um, uh, fall coming in here, that, you know, the checkered plaid look is going to be super popular and I might as well try a brush that is meant to help you easily create that look. I do have one of these from Leaf Gel that I really like. It's called the Border Brush, Border 2. But again, I'm looking to compare the different brands from the different retailers so that depending on what region you live in, uh, depending on which store you prefer to buy from, you guys have options. So this is the long straight brush. Here's what the tip of this one looks like. It's a very blunt square, but a skinnier square so that you're meant to be able to get um, really nice straight lines with it, thick straight lines to achieve, again, that checkered plaid type look. So yeah, those are the four brushes that I picked up. I will go ahead and test all of them out. I will insert some of that footage right here. Okay, so to test out the brushes, I'm going to use the D-Gel Painting Gel. This is just the white color. I do really like this packaging. It has this nice silicone stopper to make sure that you aren't causing a huge mess whenever you use this gel. I don't know if any of you follow um, Chris Onyaneri on Instagram, but she is an amazing 3D nail artist and she has her own brand now. So she does like 3D clays and stuff. And it was so cool to see that she recently scored a collab with DGEL. So now she has like her own branded um, DGEL painting kit. It comes with six colors, seven maybe, six or seven. One of the two, but it's like your primary colors. And then I think blue, uh, black, white, and round. So it's a really awesome starter kit if you're looking to try out the DGEL painting gels. Um, yeah, I just think it's so cool that she was able to score a collab with them. So let's try out these leaf brushes. So I will actually start with all of them. Why don't, why don't we just try all of them? Huh? I'll do the, I'll do them in order. So I'll start with the long liner brush. Here's what the long liner brush looks like. Look at how nice and thin I was able to get that line. And that's with my hands are pretty shaky right now because um, it's kind of cold in the room that I'm currently painting in. So that's without having even the steadiest hand. You can just get such nice thin details with this. I really like this liner brush. Let's do the cute leaf brush. So for the petal, you just kind of like press down and then lift up. And the more perpendicular your brush is to the nail surface, um, the better you'll get like a nice point. And there you go. You have super cute little petals, little flower shapes. Um, so yeah, I do really like this kind of brush for that. And then let's try the longer leaf brush. So this should do the same thing, but just give us bigger petal. So let's see. I'm gonna hold it relatively perpendicular to the nail. Press down and then lift up. 
See how it just creates that nice petal shape because you have the more rounded tip here. And now I'm running out of room, but you get the gist. <laughs> it's just really nice for making that, that petal shape. So yeah, super easy to work with to get those nice paint strokes. And last but not least, we have our check brush the long straight all right i'm kind of out of room but we'll try it anyway i'll just go down the line that we already made see what i can do okay so you definitely want to load this up with a lot of paint to get a really smooth line But there you go, you can just get like a nice, thicker straight line with this. And I wonder, you might be able to like turn it on its side too and get a skinnier one. Yeah, so you can also turn it on its side and get more of a skinny line. So yeah, that's with it's on its side like this. And this is with it straight, that. So it's really good for, again, that kind of like checkered look, that checkered pattern. I am definitely going to be around with this to see overall if it makes things easier than what I usually do, which is like put down two lines and then fill in the center. Um, this just is one straight, straight line with one brush. All right, so these are all of my new brushes. Super happy to have these. I think they'll be great for doing nail art. And once again, I just love that they come with their own caps. They are super easy to store and whatnot. So yes, very pleased with these. Okay, I lied. This is actually Kai from the future and I have more brushes to review for you. So these are Sweetie Nail Supplies' own brand new brushes. At the time that I filmed this, I wasn't sure if they were going to be up on the website yet. They did send these to me as PR, so I hadn't filmed anything for it, but they are up on the website now. The first brush is this long liner brush, liner number one, and they all come with this cool hexagonal shaped brush cap that's made out of silicone. So it's not going to roll around on your table or anything like that. I think it would also help protect your bristles in case you accidentally jammed them into the cap. But here's that long liner in action. I'm doing the same test with the same D-gel painting gel as I did with the other brushes. And I would say this is comparable and even cheaper. I think the Sweetie Nail Supply brushes are $15 each. I'm not exactly sure what they're made out of. I know the Diami brushes claim to be like real hair, so I would have to double check the website. But in terms of performance, it worked really well. I really like this uh, smaller short liner brush. It's so, so thin. Again, very comparable to like the Diami short liner brush. You could get some really nice details out of it. They also have this oval painting brush. I think that's just for getting larger areas, for applying like a potted gel. It's fairly soft, you can see me rubbing the glove there. I just had some isopropyl alcohol on it from cleaning out the bristles, but yeah, it, it applies pretty well. I will say though, my go-to for gel application in pots will always be that Mayo square brush, the piano brush. Here is their check brush. Now, when I look at the thickness of this one versus the Diami one that I just showed you all, this one is actually thinner, so it depends on the look you're going for. Do you want a thicker stripe or are you looking for a thinner stripe? That's going to determine potentially which of these you are going to purchase. And then the last one is a petal brush. So this is very similar to that uh, Leaf Cute brush from Diami, the same sort of pointed tip. I did go in with, I think, a little bit too much gel here. 
so my petals aren't looking the neatest but i try to go back and clean them up a little bit um they do not have currently like a long leaf brush just a small one but still i think for a first collection of brushes this offers a lot of really great variety and i do just really appreciate the hexagonal shape and the silicone brush caps because they just keep your brushes in place and nice and tidy so yeah definitely check these out now the color on the last nail that i showed you was actually a new product as well it is this product here which is the apricot yeah apricot pink the pale pink from the mayo doa collection so the doa collection is actually three different gels it's three nude pink and white gels that are meant to be just kind of like basic base colors so i also got snow white from the doa collection so here are these two Here's the packaging for these. Here's the information. If you can make out what they're saying, you get 10 grams for each. And I believe these are 14 each. Again, I'll put the prices up in the corner, but I got two. So this is MS03 and MS01, which is, oh, you know what? I might've, I'll have to double check. The box itself says apricot which I thought was the nude color. So I might actually have, I've been thinking it was a pale pink the whole time. I think I have the white and the nude, but let me show you these. They're just really nice syrup gels. They're pretty thick. Here's kind of like the viscosity of them. They're decently thick they're not super runny so you could kind of like build up the coverage in one coat or you could use multiple thinner coats it just depends on how you like to do your nails but they're a nice sheer base great for layering art on top of so here's a swatch of number three again just this really lovely sheer pinky color it very much reminds me of like the doi nudie pink this one might be just slightly thicker i think but it goes on really nicely it self levels again very sheer coverage so if you wanted just like a hint of color you could go in with one coat for more color payoff though we can go in with a second coat So yeah, that's the second coat. It's just a really nice, like, nudie, nudie pink color. And here is number one. This is Snow White. And this is just a milky white, as the name suggests. I would say this is a pretty neutral toned white. It almost looks ever so slightly warm toned. Warm tone in the sense that it's not like a purely like cool toned stark white. So here's one coat of the Doa Snow White. Let's just see what a second coat does. Yeah, second coat is definitely more opaque. I would compare this to kind of like the consistency and opacity of Yogurt Nail Korea. I really like their syrup gels. They're slightly more on the opaque side. And this seems to be following suit, but I really like it. It's a really pretty white, nice coverage. Okay, and the last kind of like basic color gel that I got is actually far from basic. 
It is a butter syrup gel. Now this brand is also relatively new to Sweetie Nail Supply and I had to try it out because these are meant to be fully non-wipe syrup gels that you can apply chrome right on top of. So there's no need to apply your color and then top coat and then chrome over the top coat and then top coat again. You can just apply this color gel and then apply your, um, your chrome and it's supposed to work just right off the bat. So I only picked up one color to see how I liked it. And then if I do really like it, I definitely want to pick up a couple more. So I got a nudie pink because I like my pinks. And can we talk about the bottle? It's very cute. It's uh, got some fun text on the front. It says butter. And then this little face on the back. Unfortunately, I think my bottle got a little bit scuffed. I don't know if I can wipe this off. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's fine. So I was able to just clean it away. Um, but look at the little face. It's so cute. I love these kinds of like emoticon faces. So this is BTS03, which I think just means butter syrup number three. And here's the color. Let me zoom in. Ooh, this is definitely a little bit more pink than I thought it would be, which is good because I was looking at the colors online and I wanted one that was a bit more of a stronger pink, not so much a nudie pink. And this is pleasantly very much like a baby pink that has quite a bit of pigment to it okay so i'm going to hold off on swatching this one because i actually ordered a couple of other products i ordered a um a few chromes from blanc blanc and so i want to make some swatches and then immediately apply the chromes on top so I'm going to go ahead and show you the chromes and then I will do the swatch of this and then we'll apply the chrome on top of the swatches to see what they look like. All right, so as I mentioned, I did get two chrome powders. So these two here are from Lon Blanc or Blanc Blanc. I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce it. I've been told by some that you're supposed to leave out the C, that it might be French, but I picked up these two and these are... Oh gosh, I can't remember the names. I think one's Sangria and one is Fireball, but it's number 68 and number 49. I will put them in the corner there so that you can see the official name. But I've seen these and I just thought they were really interesting colors. Something kind of out of the ordinary from what most people sell when it comes to chrome powders. So I wanted to give them a try. Now, in order to test them, I will go ahead and swatch this one like I talked about so that we can see what it looks like on top. Now, I also got two products that are supposed to be good for chrome isolation. This is the May Mode Matte Top Coat. It's the new formula specifically made for chrome isolation. I did already try this in my Celestial Nail video. That was a work with me that I'm really proud of. I make like a 3D spinner charm. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. I will link it right here. But it's this super interesting, let me zoom in here a little bit. But it's this super interesting, very thick matte top coat. You can see here that it looks very cloudy. And that is all of those like matte particles it's just super thick, super glossy, and very mattifying. This leaves the smoothest matte finish behind that I have ever dealt with, I, I believe. I will say you want to use like a pretty thin layer if you're going to be applying it over like a cat eye gel or something glittery so that you don't put too thick of a layer and ruin the shine. I did that on the first try of it, but I've since experimented with it a little bit more and it's perfectly fine over like glitter polishes, cat eye polishes, as long as you do a really thin, even layer. And then this one I haven't tried yet with Chrome. It is the Mayo, uh, yeah, I think it's Mayo, right? Yep, Ginny X Mayo collaboration, the Yummy Matte Top Coat. Now, both of these are supposed to be powder resistant. This box is so cute. I love a pink and yellow design. I am just such a sucker for that. Clearly. Huh. But you are supposed to be able to use both of these 
with colored pencils. I actually don't have any colored pencils here with me. I've been meaning to pick some up to do like the fun little doodly colored pencil look. I just haven't yet. So I can't try that, but I can tell you how they both work with chrome isolation. Let's see what this one looks like. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so this too looks like a very smooth chrome. Nice and viscous. I don't really like my chrome matte top coats to be too, too thin so that they run everywhere. I like them to kind of smooth out what's underneath as well. Okay, so I'm gonna test out this as a non-wipe top coat to put the chromes on. And then I'm also going to do a test with both of these to see if these will also be good for isolating chrome. I know they're marketed as a powder-free option when it comes to a matte top coat. They're actually marketed more towards uh, art gels rather than top coats. Like they will give you a matte finish, but especially this one is not what you would expect from a traditional matte top coat. It's more meant to be for applying your nail art and then putting a regular sealing top coat over it. So let's give them a try. First of all, we have to swatch this. So far it's going on pretty nicely. It's definitely like a medium viscosity gel. Not super runny, but not super thick either. I like it. It seems to self-level pretty nicely too. I put a pretty thick coat on here, so I'm just taking off some excess. Okay, not bad. It's a nice base pink color. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and let it self-level. And then as I'm doing this, let me double check on my phone and see how long you're supposed to cure this for. Okay, so I checked the website and it does say to go ahead and cure it for a full 60 seconds and then you should be able to wipe the chrome on top. So I'm going to stick this in my lamp and actually, I'm going to do 30 seconds and then apply um, the matte products over these two swatches and then do a full 60 second cure because I want to see if I can use it for, again, chrome isolation, that sort of thing. So let me go ahead and do the other swatch as well. Okay, so let's do the yummy matte on this one. And then we'll do the main mode on the other. I know the main mode works. I just haven't tried the yummy. So we shall see. Now I'm just gonna apply this to half of the nail. Again, this is just a simple test to see if it will even work with chrome isolation because it's not exactly what it's marketed for. It's marketed more for like colored pencils and drawing with markers and other types of art tools on the nail, so I want to see if you get this, if you can also use it as a good chrome isolator. So I'm just applying it over half, and then I will cure this the full 60 seconds. Because I want to make sure that the matte top coat is nice and cured, that way there's no error in um, the matte top coat. So for this one, I'll use the May mode. And I will paint it on the left side so that we can tell them apart just in case. And again, this stuff is quite thick. Like the, uh, the mattifying particles are pretty concentrated in this matte top coat. So I do recommend a thin layer so that you're not distorting um, any sort of glitters or colors underneath if you're using like a cat eye polish or something like that. But one thing I do really like about this one is the brush on this is just so soft and flexible. It very much reminds me of the Divock brushes, and I love the Divock brushes that come in the bottle. Again, they're just so soft and flexible that they glide over the nail really easily. If you have noticed, sometimes if your brush in the bottle is too stiff, 
it will actually pull the nail polish away from the nail and that creates streaking but when you have a really nice soft one like this you get a really even cover uh product which means that you can get a nice thin layer all right so here's the yummy and i don't know if it's uh it definitely feels tacky so i think both of these are wipe gels so i do believe you need to cleanse the inhibition layer so i'm just going to try carefully cleanse just the matte side and this is just some isopropyl alcohol once it's cleansed really nice smooth finish here's the may mode and i'm going to do the same exact thing all right and here are the two side by side this is the may mode and this is the yummy matte top so let's go ahead and try these super excited for these again they're just such interesting colors they're very warm toned for the sake of saving product i'm not going to use the little makeup sponge that this comes with i find that if you use a silicone tool instead you end up saving yourself a bit of mess so i'm going to use this one here for application this is from Enail couture i got it in like one of the scoops that they were running last year but you can use any sort of silicone tool, you can find them on Amazon, on Timu, wherever you shop. But this is Blanc Blanc or Blanc Blanc. I'm not sure which one it is. And this is Fireball. It honestly doesn't look like much in the pot or in the camera from what I can tell. But in person, it has this really lovely gold shift to it. A golden blue shift. It's not yellow. So... One of the things I actually struggle with when it comes to chrome powders is finding one that's not going to be super yellow. Because some of them, when they shift, they they are like a warm shift, but a very yellow one. So I'm hoping that this one is a bit more of like a golden shift. All right, moment of truth. Ooh. Okay. Yup. This is a nice golden shift. Okay, I actually need a little bit more. Okay, that is actually such a pretty color. It's like a blue base, but then it has these peachy pinky golden tones in it oh i really like that so that's fireball um i will go ahead and try these over black too in just a second but oh my goodness that is stunning i was really hoping that it would be more of that golden base rather than just a yellow shift and it really is it's like a blue purple to pinky peach golden shade and it's just stunning i am super happy i picked this up i really like this chrome okay and the matte top coat it does seem to have worked pretty well like i'm just wiping it off with my finger here like i just wiped it off with my finger and the extra came off really easily uh this line isn't perfectly smooth because when i applied it it wasn't there was a little bit of that texture there so that's not the chrome powder and it's not the butter syrup gel and it's also not the matte top coat that's just me that's just user error but it did wipe off fine from the area um, where the matte top coat is fully applied this is the butter syrup number three with the yummy matte on top of it to isolate the chrome and the fireball blonde blonde chrome powder so up next this one looked really interesting this is called sangria if you are either European or of age, because in the States you can't drink until very late in life, you will probably know what a sangria is, but it's just a like fruity wine drink. And so this has a gorgeous deep purpley red hue to it. And so I had to pick this up because again, it just was very different than a lot of the other chrome powders that I've tried and I wanted to give it a go. I will say you don't get a ton of product in these. That's one thing is um, they are cheaper, but they also don't come with quite as much chrome powder as some other brands. But look at that. 
The camera really isn't picking up like the purpley blue red tones, but this is giving vampy vibes and I am so excited to use this. I might do like a vampire set for Halloween. It might be late because I'm very behind on nail content and all that sort of thing, but I can see this being really amazing for that. So let's give it a test. The nice thing about these silicone tools and using them for application is they don't absorb a bunch of the powder and so you can just clean them off super easily with rubbing alcohol. Um, Okay, very interesting. Hmm. Let me go ahead and clean the excess off. I made a huge mess. So my favorite cleaning tool for extra chrome powder is a makeup sponge, one of these just like cheapo triangular ones. Does an excellent job of just wiping away the extra. This is such a cool chrome. It's showing up super well on the camera. It's a little bit lighter of a tone here in person like it's more of a gray over this light pink so i'm excited to try this one over the black because i think that will just deepen the color up but it does have those beautiful beautiful purpley almost like a a blue purple in here too a shift of like a cooler tone purple to magenta to red such a nice chrome powder as well I am so far super impressed with these two, mostly because they're just colors that I haven't seen before. Like you often get the Aura Chromes with like the duo shift um, for the pastel colors or like the single shift powders that have like one predominant color. Whereas these ones are just super interesting and again, something I haven't personally tried um, a bunch. If any of you have cheaper dupes, definitely drop them in the comments below but I am super happy I picked these up. So here are these two and let me go get a black polish and we will test it over black. Okay, and this sangria color really is so pretty over oops and then i don't even know if the camera is picking it up because of this black background but the sangria color over the black is super pretty i am 100 percent going to be doing some sort of like vampiric design with this even if it does end up being late for halloween i don't care it's just such the perfect chrome for it. I can't not. That or like maybe a dragon look would be amazing. All right, and then on the other half, I'm gonna put on Fireball. Ooh. Wow, okay, those golds really come out over black with Fireball. Over the pink, the blues were more predominant, like the blues and purples. But over this black, this is definitely just like a nice, warm toned, golden chrome powder. That's really pretty as well. Okay, I definitely love these two. Very happy I bought them. It's interesting because over the black, they look similar, but over like a lighter color, they definitely do not. So over black, the fireball is predominantly that blue, um, sorry, not blue, that golden color. There's a slight blue shift that almost looks like an aqua-y green color. I don't know if you can really see that. It's giving very like beetle, the skin of a beetle. And then over black with sangria, it's 
definitely more of that red orange color again as a comparison here they are over the lighter color i don't know i might like both of them over a lighter color like this one i think would be super pretty over a red paint because the black almost takes away some of the dimension same with fireball i actually would maybe recommend using these over a lighter color and I don't usually say that with chromes. A lot of the times they look really cool over black. But yeah, these might be more of a, like a white or a colored uh, topper, but they're super pretty. Really dynamic, very unique. I'm happy with these. So I guess I forgot to record audio for this section. So I am doing a voiceover, but this is the Mayo Eros collection. This was sent to me as PR from Sweetie Nail Supply. So super excited to receive it. I was planning on purchasing it myself, honestly. I have developed quite the obsession with magnetic gels. I will be reviewing the Divock White Knight collection in my next haul video, but this one is such an interesting set. So it's themed around like pinks and gold colors and love. It does come with a really nice, strong cylindrical magnet. But despite the fact that it's love themed, I actually think these are really amazing fall colors. So you get a gold flake topper. This is like a reflective gold silver topper gel. The crystal clear base means that any color that you put under will show through. It's just a really nice flake glitter polish. And then you also get seven magnetic gels. Now the first three in the collection, they are kind of similar. You get this like baby pink, almost peachy shade. These first three colors are a little bit more subtle than the rest. And you can buy these individually. So if you're not looking to pick up the whole collection, you just want maybe a couple. That is an option on Sweetie Nail Supply right now. But as you can see, they just magnetize super easily and give off just this really pretty glow. It's not like a two-toned magnetic collection. It really is just a gorgeous jelly base color with that really nice silvery magnetic particle. The simplicity of these means that you could really layer them as like a background for any sort of art. Again, these first two colors, they are a little bit similar. This one though is a bit more of a cool toned, deeper pink. And then the next color is where we start deviating a little bit more into those I would consider fall colors. This one is MM12, and it's more of a deeper, peachy, almost red shade. All of the gels in this collection have that sort of peachy, warm undertone, which I think makes them really nice fall colors. You get some pinks, some reds, some orangey umber colors, and a really nice olive green. That is maybe not everyone's favorite shade, but I happen to really like it. I'm thinking of doing like a Chinese lantern plant design with some 3D Chinese lanterns made out of the, the wire method that I've been using in my nail art. I really love that method for 3D charms. So yeah, let me know if that's something that you would like to see. This is MM13 and definitely my favorite color. I am only doing one coat on all of the swatches here just to show you the consistency of the polishes. I have already swatched each of the colors with two layers, and I will show you that on the swatch card later, but I wanted to show you how the polish actually went on the nail, and it's very smooth. It's like a, a medium viscosity, I would say, not too thin, but also not too thick. It self-levels nicely, so that if you did want to do maybe just like one more sheer coat, you could definitely get away with it. I was really impressed by the pigment in the actual base polish. This one here is another really pretty deep, like umber orange color. It's got a really nice base. So that again, could just do one coat if you wanted, or you can deepen it up with two. And the contrast between that deeper base color and the silvery magnetic particles is just really nice. It makes it glow and it's very apparent the effect. This is that olive green color I was talking about. It's almost like between a gold and a green, I would say. 
and I know that this is not everybody's favorite sort of tone. I happen to really like it though, so I was a big fan of this polish, and I love that this collection, because it's centered around love, because it's centered around roses, it gives you everything you need to create like a really nice floral look with all of the different shades of pink, red, orange, and then this green to do the foliage with. It's just a really nice rounded collection, I feel like, that gives you a lot of options to work with. And last but not least is this kind of bronzy gold color. It's not like a yellowy gold. It's definitely more of a brownish muted neutral toned gold, which I really like. I do have lots of like gold chromes, gold polishes, but this one is a little bit different. It's almost like a, there's a word for it. It's not, oh, I don't know. There's a specific color though. It's, um, it's nice. I like it. It's something a little bit different than your standard gold colors. And that actually rounds out the collection. So I believe right now the collection as a whole is $109. You can purchase each individual gel at $17 though. The four at the end here I think are my favorite. These really nice deeper fall colors. I do like the pinks. I would say if you don't want to purchase a whole collection, you could definitely get away with skipping one of the pink shades because they are so similar. The ones at the front. The topper is really nice though. It could go over really any of these shades and add just an extra layer of dimension. Yeah, one of these two here I think you could skip if you wanted to. But I am pretty happy with the performance. They're super shiny. Here's some b-roll I took later of swatches with two coats. I think with two coats, you really, really start to see the difference in the colors and you see those deeper tones. So I would definitely recommend using two coats if you are going to use the collection, especially like number 12 here. I think one coat did not do it justice at all when I was swatching it. And same with uh, number 14. Overall, I think it's just a really pretty collection that is very fall appropriate despite the love theming. The cylindrical magnet is really strong, but you only get that if you order the whole collection. Okay, it's actually second to last, but I have Jinju Jam, which is similar to Milk Jam, uh, which is Yogo's very famous white 3D gel. This one, however, is a pearlescent 3D gel. So can we talk about how cute this box is? It's got like the shell pearl design on the outside, the hollow font here, and then inside is also decorated. I just, I can't with Korean and Japanese gel products. They just do the packaging so well. It sucks me in. So yeah, this is the Yogo Ginger Jam right here. Get 15 grams like with all of the other ones. I'll admit I did open this up already because as soon as I got it, I had to. Sorry, but that does mean that you get to see it right away. I love the Yogo Stopper on their 3D gels. I think this is so helpful for just having an extra layer of protection. But I'm noticing now, I think, yep, I left mine upside down. Whoopsie. So some of the gel has stuck to the stopper. That's okay though. But look, it is this stunning pearlescent like putty. This stuff is just honestly too cool. I can't. It is, it can get slightly sticky, I will say, because I think it has the same uh, clear base as their 3D clear sculpting gel, which does get slightly sticky sometimes. I tend to use a silicone spatula usually. With it, I find it sticks much less silicone. And of course you can always wet your tool down with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to stop the sticking. I just, it's so bouncy. And I love that pearlescent shine to it. It will slightly self-level, so it's more for like rounded designs than it is for something with a lot of like sharp defined lines or angles. Like you can see that it does eventually self-level just a tiny bit. Oh man, 
I'm messing with it too much and now it's really sticking. Um, but I just, it's so pretty. But yeah, it just has a gorgeous, gorgeous shine to it, especially once you top coat it. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. I'm so excited to use this with some designs. And I think it's just going to be an amazing way to elevate something. So there's that. So this is the actual last item and these are a set of chains that I actually got a few orders ago. I just haven't gotten around to showing them off. But these are the chain set from Nail Bio, which makes the uh, the Doi collection of polishes, the nudie syrup gels. And this is just a really nice pre-organized pack of different types of chains in both gold and silver. Now, what I really appreciate is the tone of gold of these chains are like a nice, it's a cool toned gold. It's not a super yellow gold. It's not like a super orangey gold. It's just a really subtle, cool toned gold. And you get different types um, in both that and the silver. That's what the silver looks like. Very shiny, very like platinum silver. Now um, you get one, two, three, six different styles. I have purchased cheaper chains from other retailers off of like Timu and stuff like that. And I will say in comparison, these are so much daintier and just like nicer looking, especially these ones here, which are these um, like little, I don't, I don't even know what you would call them. Um, you can cut them apart though, I've seen that. So you just use like one or two on the nail and you cut apart the link and it just leaves like that zircon charm that you can use to decorate with. And these are so much, again, daintier and just nicer looking than a lot of the ones that I have purchased off of Timu and those kinds of sites. So this was expensive. I think the set is like $12 with a discount. It's closer to, you know, 11 or 10, but I do think they're just gorgeous. And um, in my opinion, depending on, you know, where you're at with your nail art, are you serving clients who are looking for very high quality alloy uh, metal charms? If that's the case, then I would definitely recommend these if you are working with uh, more like luxury products. Um, but if you're just doing nails for yourself, you know, if you have the money, hey, definitely go for it because these are just super pretty dainty charms, not charms, chains. Like, look at this one. It's just this cute, like, uh, varied pattern of larger links and smaller links. And I just think they're really nice and um, very elegant, very dainty looking. The color's gorgeous. I will say the only thing is, because these are so nice and they have that cool toned gold color, I'm having trouble actually matching them to my charms. It's almost like a bronzy gold. A lot of the cheaper charms, I'll be honest, that you get off of like Timu, AliExpress, I have a bunch of them here. Um, the gold is more of like a, a yellowy gold alloy. I don't know if you can see it there, but those two golds are very different, right? Like this gold is much more yellowy, much more uh, silvery almost. And this is just like a, a, a neutral gold almost, I would say. This one's a little bit closer but still a little bit too saturated, still a little bit too yellow. So that's the only thing is I am now having trouble finding high quality charms to match these. So if you are somebody who buys off of AliExpress and who um, has links to some shops that sell higher quality alloy charms, um, please, please, please give me your recommendations down in the comments. I'd love to hear them because I would love to start expanding my collection of like nicer alloy charms so that I can get things that match with my high quality chains here. So that's the only thing to keep in mind is that this color is beautiful, but it is quite different than what you standardly expect in like alloy charms. So you will have a little bit of a different tone between them. Oh, and you know what? I did forget one thing. So I ordered this off of Amazon. It is just a simple pack of, um, I think it's just a single actually. It's a watercolor palette. So this is just like the palette I actually have for my um, MPA art palette. 
I've shown it on my channel before. Um, and this one here, oh gosh, oh no. I really should have checked which side was up and which side was down. Whoopsie. Okay, so this kit here comes with all of these little, uh, these little trays. And then you stick a magnet on the back of them. And then you uh, can magnetize them to the bottom of the palette and keep your gels nice and neat. Uh, I have seen some people make like a, a DIY palette with these of potted gels just for easier access, which I think is a great idea. Um, I personally got it because whenever I do 3D sculpting, there's a lot of the time where I end up with extra 3D gel, like mixed custom color 3D gel. And I don't exactly want to get rid of it. Like I feel wasteful just curing it and throwing it away. And so I thought, instead, why don't I put this palette together and then I can save my extra 3D gels in here. I think, who did I see doing this? I saw somebody on YouTube who was doing that. I will try to remember, it might be mini Amy. I don't know if I do remember, I will um, put their username like, in the corner right there. But yeah, I saw somebody use these uh, little watercolor palettes for holding extra 3D gel and I just thought it was a great idea. So I picked one up from Amazon. It was pretty cheap. I think it was like seven, eight dollars. And it's just extra storage solutions for your polish so that you don't have to waste any. Okay, and that's actually it. So let me go ahead and set everything out for a thumbnail and give you my final thought. Okay, so that is everything for this haul. I really like all the products. The only things I haven't really gotten to test fully are the um, potion, but I've seen really great reviews on that. And I guess the, yeah, I guess that's it. Like the potion and maybe the cuticle oil are the only things um, that I can't like necessarily recommend to you because I haven't tested them in any way. But I do like the smell, um, it's very nice. I do love this bottle. So if you're into very pretty uh, decorative type nail care, then you know maybe that's for you. Otherwise, I am really happy with all of the products I receive, especially these chrome powders here. I'm so excited to use those in some different looks. They're just really pretty colors, very interesting colors, I would say. And I love this collection. I think at the time of recording this, there are only three left in stock. I'm hoping that they restock it because I have a feeling it's going to be pretty popular, but um, I apologize in advance if it is out of stock by the time this video goes up because I'm filming on like Monday, Sunday, and it's supposed to go up uh, the next coming Sunday. So we'll see, but hopefully it's available for you guys who want to pick it up because I just think it's so pretty. The matte top coats were really interesting to use. I think both of them will be great for any sort of nail art using chrome powder or colored pencils because if the chrome powder doesn't stick then there's no way fallout from a colored pencil would so yeah just some really awesome things i am super excited to be able to do this with you all if you have any recommendations again on different alloy charms um different stores that sell alloy charms that are high quality that might match the the chains here better i'd love to hear them if you have any favorite chrome powder recommendations let me know in the comments down below also if you have storage solutions for chrome powders i have them all currently like thrown into a bin in my drawer and it's not the best solution so i am definitely open to ideas um i might try to just get like a big clear tray to stack them in but we'll see we will see anyway i appreciate you all being here let me know what products you are excited for me to try next. I will be trying the Divock White Knight collection. Probably in my next haul, I'll be showing that off. But if there are things from Sweetie Nail Supply that you want to see, uh, let me know. Check out all of the links down below to my socials and all of these products if you would like to pick them up. Don't forget you can support me with my code GETPRESSED and save 10%. Uh, you can always obviously use like whatever discount code is bigger. And then if you want to follow my referral link for Sweetie Nail Supply, I have that um, by my code in the description. And even if there's like a better sale going on, if you follow the referral link, I at least get recognized as like being uh, a reference, which really helps me out. I appreciate it more than you guys know. 
Thank you so much for being here. I hope you all are having a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.